In this video, I'm going to be covering my five favorite attractions in Busan. Busan is the second most populous city in South Korea with about 3.5 million people. Home to Korea's busiest port, beautiful beaches, old temples, and very expensive real estate, it's a very popular tourist destination for both Koreans and foreigners. I visit Busan this July and compiled this list as a guide for future travelers. So let's begin! If you like history, this first attraction is for you. Heidong Yonggung Sa Temple. Now this is a Buddhist temple in northeastern Busan. Originally built in 1376 during the Koryo Dynasty, it was destroyed during the Japanese invasions of Korea starting 1592. It was rebuilt in the 1930s and renamed to Heidong Yonggung Temple, what it's known as today. Set along the northern coastline, the temple is very popular with sightseers, with many tourists coming here all year round. So how do you get there? The easiest way is by car. However, if you're on a budget, you can take the subway instead and get off at Osiria Station. It's a nice hike from there. You pass lots of Adventure World and Outlet along the way before hiking through the seaside neighborhood. The entrance is free, no tickets needed. There are plenty of cool sites to visit. Some people pray at altars, other people offer sacrifice at certain statues. Throw some money to the well for good luck, or enjoy a traditional Korean meal in one of the restaurants on the temple ground. The best part of year to visit is apparently the end of May, commemorating Buddha's birthday on May 27th in fact. During the celebrations, the complex is decorated with paper lanterns. There's a whole strip of restaurants and souvenir shops on the way back to the parking lot, so don't miss this part either. So the next stop is a must-see, Beacon Station. Located at 472 meters altitude, this place has the most amazing view of the city, especially at night. And not only is the outlook post higher than any skyscrapers tall, because the mountain is located quite centrally, you can get a 360 degree view of most of Busan. So back in the day, this place was used for beacon fires to give war signals to the population, and depending on the number of fires, the signal had a different meaning. Now, without a doubt, the best way to get there is by car. There's no direct connection by bus or subway, and even if you get off at the closest bus station, it's quite a stretch. The hike is very steep and demanding, and will take you about one and a half hours from the bottom. However, if you're adventurous and you want to walk, I recommend starting from the closest subway station, Mulmangol. On the way up, you pass an interesting mountain village in the middle of nowhere. Occasionally a car drives by, but otherwise it feels like an enclave within a huge metropolis and felt kind of spooky all alone. But that also made it pretty cool, and I won't forget. The next stop is Heonde Beach. One of the two famous sand beaches in Busan, Heonde claims to be the most famous beach in South Korea, with about 10 million visitors every year. The walk from Heonde subway station kind of reminds me of the Ocean City, New Jersey boardwalk, or Coney Island, but instead of rides, it's giant skyscrapers. The landmark skyscraper is the Busan X LCT The Sharp at 412 meters. It's the tallest tower in Busan, and the three-tower complex was only completed in 2019. The northern side of Heonde also has a nice fishery and some cool restaurants. The 
The beach itself is about one and a half kilometers long and perfect for swimming and family activities. Across the sea awaits Japan, about 200 kilometers away along the Tsushima Strait. <laughs> The southern side of Heonde has a great promenade that leads to Dongbaek Park, a walk I highly recommend. Not only is the boardwalk neat, but after arriving at the lighthouse, we have a great view of the Guangali Bridge and Heonde Park Marina. The other famous sand beach is Guangali Beach. Although basically the same length, Guangali is more of a nightlife, fun vibe than Heonde. Instead of hotels, it's bars and restaurants. Instead of skyscrapers, the Guangandeyu Bridge. This is the second longest bridge in the country, full of light shows and fireworks. If you're lucky, you might experience a drone show as well. I really recommend coming here at night for the best experience. There's plenty of nightlife and tons of bars, with one of the best atmospheres in the country. The last place on the list is Jagalchi Market. This famous fish market is located in the southern part of Busan. It is the largest seafood market in Korea and home to a huge variety of fish, squid, and other foods. You can literally find everything here. Naturally, there's also quite the pervasive seafood stench surrounding the market, so be aware if this is your thing. The second attraction here is the bustling Biff Square, which is directly adjacent to the fish market. Biff stands for Busan International Film Festival, and this area is full of movie theaters and handprints of famous Korean actors, kind of like the Walk of Fame. It's also a great spot for street food, so be sure to stop by. Overall, these locations only cover my top 5 spots in Busan, but there are plenty of other great things to see as well. Notable places include Busan Citizens Park, the National Maritime Museum, and Bujan District and Market. And not only will you not run out of things to do in Busan, the city is also a great home base from which you can plan day trips to places like Ulsan, Gyeongju, and Daegu. Yeah. 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 Yeah.